M. Night Shyamalan is back at it again, and this time he has a horror film called Trap, in which it's getting very mixed reviews and a lot of divisive opinions. Doesn't have the greatest Rotten Tomatoes score, and it didn't make that much money at the box office. But ultimately, what did I think about this movie, and is it even worth your time to even make a trip to the cinema? Well, stick around, and let's talk about it. A father and his teen daughter attend a pop concert only to realize they've entered the center of a dark and sinister event. The film stars Josh Hartnett, Ariel Donahue, Salika Shyamalan, Allison Pill, Haley Mills, Jonathan Langdon, and Kid Cudi, and many others, and was directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and he's done films like The Sixth Sense, The Happening, Glass, Split, Knock at the Cabin, Old, and many other films. Trap. Now, when I saw a trailer for this, my first thought was, oh no, another M. Night Shyamalan film, mainly because I have a very much love and hate relationship with this man. He makes films like Split that I never cared for, Knock at the Cabin, Lady in the Water, and he's also made films that I've really liked, like The Happening, which I know many people hate that film, Old, which is another film that I know a lot of people don't like, Signs, which is a great movie, The Village, which is another divisive one as well, and so he has this new movie named Trapped. My best friend, he saw the trailer for this, and he's like, I'm really hyped for this film, this is going to be a great film, and I was like, wait a minute, hold your horses here. I really thought the trailer just gave away a lot here, so basically what the plot of this is, you have a father and daughter who attend a pop concert, and when they get to this pop concert, this is not a spoiler because they tell you in the trailer, there is somebody that is there that apparently is a killer called The Butcher. Now, this is very much boarded up with a lot of security and very high profile type of government and people looking for this killer, but necessarily not having a description of the killer. The music here is pretty good. It is done by Salika, who is M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. I had never heard of her music before. I think she may be under the radar, but I think after this, she may become a little bit more of a rising fame star. I think here her music, you know, it's not really my type of music, but I do think her dance moves on stage, her choreography, the music itself, I can understand why somebody would really like this music. And you have this little girl here played by Ariel Donahue. She does a really good job really being this super fan. I think Josh Hartnett here, playing the father he does a pretty good job as well he seems like he is a pretty good father and he cares about his children he does have a son as well as we later learn in the film and obviously a wife as well so when he's going to this concert he's just kind of there for the ride he's being a good father he doesn't care about the music a lot of times in this film he's really wandering off he's going to the concession stands he's trying to get this t-shirt for his daughter he meets up with this guy which they do show him in the trailer and he explains what is really actually going on as the police are looking for this killer and ultimately the setup here I did actually like the feel of the concert it feels very authentic I've been to some concerts in arenas I don't really prefer those kind of concerts I like more of like club concerts and just smaller type of areas but a concert like this at the magnitude of this type of show I think is very authentic what really hurts this movie is the trailer pretty much gives away the killer unfortunately it does show show in the trailer this guy who is tied up to a chair in a certain room and we don't really know exactly who the killer is but at the same time I kind of figured it out in the trailer and I think it was kind of obvious which I think really hurts this film because when this film actually is going and chugging along and we're getting this premise you know I like the premise but the problem is within the first 20 minutes of the film they already show this guy that's already tied up in the room and we already know right away who the killer is. So right there, you kind of kill the suspense because a lot of times throughout this film, you're thinking something's going to happen where someone's going to get killed off or the killer is going to just strike at any moment. And we don't really get that. It's more so a film where you have a killer trying to escape this arena and try to get past all this security, this high security that's there. 
that seemingly is very bad at their job, which this film has a lot of conveniences, which is another problem for this film, having to really subject your disbelief, which a lot of this film really does have. There is a certain scene where it involves a limo, and soon as it starts to get to that point in the film, it really starts to turn for me because that's about an hour to 70 minutes into the film. The film is around 100 minutes. So then when we get to that point of the film, it starts to really take a nosedive for me. There are certain conveniences that really just make you shake your head. You're like, no way would that ever happen in which this is going to really divide people because some people are really not going to like that, which I don't like that. Then there's some other people who are going, well, this is a film. It's supposed to be fun they're gonna completely overlook that. So it really depends on what side of the fence you're on. Salika, now I did say that I did like her choreography and her music and her performance isn't too bad, but I do think in her acting ability in certain scenes, she is a little bit cringe. You can tell that she's a rookie actress and some of her lines, they come off very cringe. Josh Hartnett, for the most part, I think his acting is pretty good, but I do think there are some lines that come off a little bit cringe from his character as well. From a writing standpoint, I think it's very weak in the third act. It starts to be something where the cops should be doing something else to really catch this suspect. And I felt like as it really starts to come to a close and how it just kind of ends up in a way like it does, I didn't really care for it all that much. I started to kind of check out a little bit within that last 20 minutes or so. And the way it ended, it definitely had my eyes rolling. I think overall from the way that this film is shot, the score isn't too bad. I think I wanted a little bit more suspense, and I think a lot of that suspense in this film, it takes a little bit longer to really get going, and I think for some audiences, they could be a little bit restless, mainly because this is labeled as a horror film, so people are probably thinking, okay, horror film, there's gonna be some killings, this is gonna be really crazy, this is gonna have a lot of chaotic elements, and I feel like there isn't a lot of chaotic elements. I feel like when we're actually in this concert hall, yeah, it's the perfect setup. There are certain scenarios that are happening where like, okay, this sounds like this could be something interesting that they could do. And then they don't really go that point. And then it just kind of plays out as a regular concert where certain events are going on. And you see this father doing certain things for his daughter. Like for instance, there's a part in this film where apparently Salika, she has somebody that comes up on stage and dances with her. So he actually approaches M. Night Shyamalan's character in which he has his cameo here, which he's a lot of cameos in his movies. And he works for the staff where they pick somebody to dance on stage. And so he says that his daughter is getting over leukemia. So he ends up getting his daughter to be on stage. And that little moment there, there is a little bit of tension that is filled with that moment. It's great to see Ariel Donahue's character actually get picked for this. You're really happy for her. When it really comes down to it, this film is just okay for me. I think with the whole arena aspect, I really did like it. The music is fine here. The acting, for the most part, isn't too bad with a few little cringy moments, like I said. Overall, the premise isn't too bad. I think this film is a lot more intriguing and interesting than Knock at the Cabin. I was very bored watching that film. I actually gave the same score that I'm gonna give this film two and a half out of five stars, but after re-watching Knock at the Cabin this past year, again for a second time, I can say that that film is just absolutely boring and it's definitely a lower score than this film. So I would say that this film is an improvement over Knock at the Cabin, though I think the cinematography in Knock at the Cabin is a lot better, but I think the premise here is a little bit more gripping and I just think they could have done a little bit more with this film and I think also not revealing so much in the trailers and not revealing the killer to us right in the trailers. It's just so blatantly obvious that I think that really hurts the film overall. I think that if you create a little bit more intrigue, a little bit more mystery, a little bit more background with the killer, I think that this could be a lot better film because again, it has a lot of things that you would really want from a film like this type of caliber. But I do think also with the horror aspect, it's lacking a little bit and you don't really get a lot from the killer itself. And then the fact that this film it has all those conveniences. You have cops in here that have a terrible way of doing their job and certain things that would never happen in the police force. And the fact that you have all these members just protecting this arena, trying to find this person, and they just don't do their job very well, it gets very irritating as an audience member. So 
when it really comes to this film, it's just an okay film. Would I watch it again? I mean, maybe. I wouldn't purchase it. It's nothing that I would say is in the top tier of M. Night Shyamalan films, but it's okay for a watch. You could watch in the theater. I don't know if this is something where you need to rush out to the theater to go check out, but I think it's okay for a one-time watch. Maybe I'll watch it down the line again, but I'm not in a rush to go check it out. But at least it's not the worst of the worst for M. Night Shyamalan. I still think that is Lady in the Water. I think that's one of his worst films that he's ever done. And with this one, I wouldn't say that it has a crazy twist to it, but I think overall it's a film that could have been a little bit more, but at the same time, it's not a terrible watch. Let me know down in the comments, did you like Trap? Did you hate it? Did you just think it was kind of meh? And if you haven't seen it yet, are you gonna check it out in a theater? Are you gonna wait for streaming or VOD? Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time.